jumping a little bit from the 1960s to the 1970s, the Pompidou Center, which Renzo Pian and I were the original partners, the partners, if you like, of a, of a competition. This is the first major competition in New York. The Sydney Opera House had started before. We did it with over perhaps the same engineers as the Sydney Opera House. It was a tremendous adventure. It was a tremendous piece of good luck winning it. I actually opposed the idea of doing a competition. But the good thing about democracy is that you can be outvoted. My partners, my partners, Renzo Piano and the engineer Ted Heppel, both were very pro it. So being a good democratic, uh, democrat, I went along. The reason I was against it, I didn't like the idea of a building which was going to be called Pompidou for a president and an old, an old left winger. And I didn't like the concept of a centralized cultural center. And I was probably wrong in many ways in both those positions. There is was a danger. But it was very difficult for Renzo and I, who were in our thirties, early thirties, the building, we'd only, we had only built single-story buildings. So it was a tremendous challenge. We, the good thing that we were with, we were naive enough to believe that we could do it. I think most people, including Ovaz, said, forget it, it's too complicated. It's too politically complicated. The first building uh, designed in, in Paris, certainly in the, in, during that century, by total foreigners. There were laws against it. And we went to court many times, and it was a difficult, difficult period, but we had a brilliant client. And the client, a man called Bordet, made it his life's work, practically, to see it was built. When I asked the client, why are you the client for this building? What experience have you got in building? And he said, I haven't got any experience. So I said, what experience have you got? And he said, well, I was in charge of the French withdrawal from Vietnam. I thought that was a very good answer. It's a problem-solving situation. In that sense, our stage is not unique. It's about understanding problems. Public Center was very much about public space. The first lines of the competition report, which Renzo and I wrote, and our teams wrote. Actually, we were small officers. We All together, we were about five of us. Um, was a Pompidou should be, it was called Beauburg then, it should be a place for all people, all ages, all creeds, the young and the old. In other words, it would be culture in terms of a meeting place, rather than culture with a, as a sort of a majestic statement. That's how, as we saw it, especially, remember this is after 1968-69, where both the states and most of Western Europe nearly collapsed under the pressure of student revolution and the union's revolution. And it was a very interesting period, a very dynamic period. So we thought that we must make a great public space. We studied the area, and in this part of Paris, in the center of Paris, there were no open spaces. So we created a very large piazza, which maybe was the most, has been, maybe the most successful part of the building, because more people go there then certainly go to the building. And the people watch the people on the facade. And the public space extends from the piazza all up the facade. So it's not just a building, private, a piazza, public. But the, the streets in the air, the escalators, it's all about making a building as public because the brief or the program was a public program. Because it's mainly a massive library, the first big public library, the Museum of Modern Art, the Boulez Music Research Center, design, which is part of the architecture, and many other activities. And we wanted them to overlap. We wanted no divisions between them. Actually, we failed, because the department chiefs did not want to mix. We wanted them to mix, but they did not want to mix. There were also things like fire regulations, which made things rather difficult. But the concept was that people would meet here, and there's nothing more exciting than the overlapping of different activities. In other words, not ghettoizing, but not separating, but mixing, as you are here, mixing together of all ages, of all social levels. And there we were attacked continuously. I mean, I remember well, not only did we have many legal uh, 
difficult situation where we would have to go to court. But our every single media, every press, every television program, every newspaper, every book hated the building. There was one only person that backed us, which is the New York Times, Ada Lee Huxtable. But everybody hated the building until it was opened when suddenly it became extremely popular. And it is the most, and has been for a long time, the most visited public building in Europe. The building is very much about flexibility. So we moved all the elements which could stop flexibility. So whereas, I'm going to say Le Corbusier, Frank Lloyd Wright and so on, in their period, remembering they were 30, 40 years before us, 50 years before us, talked about the plan generating the solution. We thought the plan was not that important. Yes, the plan was important because we had a piazza and a building. But we said, we don't mind whether the museum is on the top floor or the bottom floor. We just leave public space because we don't think that whatever we decide today will be there 20 years hence. And we built a library, for instance, at the end of when the, when the library was finished, books practically didn't exist. But when the library started, it was all books because, of course, information technology took, has taken over the whole communication system. Paintings, the modern paintings of the 60s and 70s are very different to modern paintings of, two, of 2010. So things are changing. The building is, in that sense, being continuously changed. So on one side, we had the people, the continuity of the people up the facade. On the other hand, we had the mechanical services. And in between the two, we had what we used to call two football pitches, totally void of any physical interruption because the structure went from side to side, the mechanical service that went one way, the people went up the other way. We also, in all our buildings, celebrate our concept of movement. We don't understand why when you get into a lift or elevator, you should not look out, why you should be pushed together so a small person's head is pushed into the stomach of a big person, rather than the possibility of excitement of moving upwards. And of course, we love, we, we like color. Um, and we see color as a way of communicating not only how the building uh, comes together, but very much about the, the theme. And this is the cultural soul center. This is the people's building. We were extremely fortunate because, of course, Paris is a historic city which had little change within the center, in the distance, in the past, in the distance, yes, but here. But with the backing of Pompidou and with the backing of the of our wonderful client, we were able to put this machine. This is more like a machine. It's a changing machine than a classical temple. It's a thing which changes and adapts. Mechanical services change continuously, like electricity changes, the number of people change, movement changes, but space, basically the 1 meter 80, 1 meter 90 that we are, that is pretty constant. So it all serves into the central part, which is the sort of the place where the people are. But we get the grain, the rhythm, out of color, form, and shape down the side. You can see this Krishna scale, which is a very important part. This tells you very much what the building is about, this sort of uh, robe of a building in the middle of this beautiful city. And this is what I've been talking about. In other words, mechanical services at one end, people down here, people along here, and these flexible floors all the way through. I talked about the process of construction, the importance. If the architect loses the concept of being, of, the, of, of buildings being about detail, detail is much more important than scale or height. It gives scale or height. And then the building may be X meters high or Y meters long, but it's totally different if it is made in brick or stone or glass or pieces. We like very much the buildings are made of pieces. pieces. They are in the end. We like to express that, those pieces which give the scale of the hand, which is still probably the most critical scale we have. These are these rather wonderful things called the we call Gerberets, which are the brackets of the big beams. The beams cantilever 15 meters without any interruption and they're pulled down by a tension cable. We had a brilliant engineer who we worked with until unfortunately he died, Peter Rice, without Peter Rice. Peter Rice was really the, the hero of 
the positive. And on the right is very much about scale. You can see the concept of the small piece against the larger total scale. The relationship of the leaf, of the, of the vegetation, and the whole hierarchy of components. On the left, it's about the most wonderful thing we have, and you have it here in this beautiful city, Istanbul, as you have it in Paris. There is nothing nicer than watching people. There is nothing nicer than watching young people go by, young girls, young boys. It's very sexy. <laughs> and that's really, in a sense, what it's about. It's people watching people. Now, we had these awesome, wonderful views, as you have, the best views in the world. Here we were looking at Montmartre at the top, somewhere down here, that's Montmartre, the theatre district, the art, historic 19th, 19th century district. Here are, are the people on the escalators. Here are people swarming around, magicians, fire eaters, musicians, and so on. It's rather beautiful, these forms as well. And they look up at the theatre of the facade, and the people on the facade look down at the people. So that, and this is, Paris is very good. In that sense, much better than Britain. Britain has improved greatly, but in those days, Britain hadn't understood the importance of pavement life, and which you have understood for many thousands of years. Finally, I just wanted to show on this building, we had an exhibition uh, two years ago of, the, of our work at the Pompidou Center. This is the sort of entrance of the Pompidou, and this is our work. Um, and this is the exhibition which was designed by uh, one of my five sons, Abe Rogers, uh, of, the, of that work. <laughs>